Hey, welcome to Dwayne's World. It's the Dwayne's World podcast. That's right. We're back. We've got another episode. Um, today, I'll be talking with my former uh, co-host, uh, Mike Timothy. So it's kind of nice having him as a co-host today. Uh, we're going to talk about some COVID-19 stuff, some Serb stuff, and his big move out west to go to film school in Vancouver. Um some of the things we talked about might have already been implemented by our government uh, as this was recorded a couple of weeks ago. So uh, hope you all enjoy and remember, subscribe. Hey, welcome to Dwayne's World. It's me, Dwayne, the Booze and Blogger, coming at you. As promised, I would be getting Mitch or Mike or both and... Voila, I have come through. I got Mike with me, uh, one of my favorite people. He does, uh, he does stand up and now he's doing film, going to film score. It's absolutely amazing. I'm so glad to have him. And uh, so we're going to talk about uh, COVID and the CERB payments and stuff like that and whatever else we talk about because he's actually a really interesting dude. And unlike most Dwayne's World podcasts, there's not going to be a fuck of a lot of us uh, yelling and screaming at each other, which is pretty cool. So welcome, wow. Mike. Well, thank you for having me, Dwayne. I'm excited to be on Dwayne's World. This is So this is like the new iteration of the podcast? This is the new iteration of the podcast, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry that I can't do all your administrative work and research. I know. And I said this before, I've said it a million times since you and Mitch left, was that I really miss especially Mitch, I miss editing. <laughs> so with COVID, um, when, when COVID hit, uh, you were still living in Ottawa and then you did something I thought was crazy, but smart at the same time. And uh, you decided to move out West. Um, how different is living out West during COVID as opposed to like Ottawa during COVID? Uh, it was kind of weird just because they were in different phases. Um, so kind of when I left Ottawa, everything was shut down. I don't think there was any restaurants or patios or indoor anything. Like there was still you had to line up at the grocery store. Like nothing was happening. So it was still kind of like staying in your house. So I also left in the wintertime. So there wasn't a lot of outdoor stuff. Um, but kind of moving to Vancouver – First of all, I got on the plane in Ottawa and there was like three feet of snow and I got off here wearing a t-shirt. So that was like a nice, a nice difference. But yeah, they hadn't been locked. Everything was still kind of open. Like it was, it almost seemed normal here. And then we went through different phases of locking down or restrictions. And we actually had like a weird period of no masks for a couple months. Is that not still going? No, they, they revoked it because all the numbers went up yeah, super high. Yeah. BC's numbers um, here it went uh, like I mean here it dropped really crazy when we opened everything back up and then I don't know how they did it but Quebec went like dropped super super low and Quebec was like the worst of them all and then it just something happened it bottomed out um, now our normal our numbers are normal but I talked to Tracy and she says, don't follow the numbers like that anymore. Follow your uh, hospitalizations and stuff because these numbers they're giving you now is more like some people having the flu. Yeah, it's not necessarily, yeah. But you can see that, the how many people are active and then hospitalized and then intensive care, kind of the numbers they give. All right, you've got your double vax, I take it? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think you were a pussy. I've called you worse, but I didn't think you were. I knew you would take it. <laughs> Not to mention, though, your new job, uh, well, your new, um, I don't know, is it a job or is it a... I don't know, I mean, career, I guess, but yeah. like, that's, that's the other thing. You're working with so many people and you're in pretty close quarters a lot. So it's, and it's a weird thing, too, because if like one person got sick, everyone would be sick and it would like shut things down. So you kind of got to be a lot more careful. Because it's not just like a job, it's something you want to do and are enjoying doing it. <laughs> like, you know, if you get sick at a normal job, yeah, fuck it, I'll take, I'll take two weeks off. I don't care if it shuts down. 
but this is like everyone's kind of more invested and more passionate. So you, I don't know, you care a little bit more if that makes sense. Do you have to um, actually, do you uh, work with like everybody on your cruise? Like you said, you got 30, 30 people up to 30 or more people working with you. Are they um, stand-ins or are they all students that are doing it? So it's, it's a cool mix. Cause like we'll have like a student crew, um, for all those departments, but like we'll hire professionals for other roles. So we have like professional hair and makeup that come in professional sound, professional actors. Um, So like a lot of like, it's kind of mixed. So it's, it's interesting because you know, the stories are that you get a lot of jobs through referrals. So even though it might be a student film or a small production, you're still working with people that are out in the real world. So you can get referrals for them or they can, they can recommend you. Oh, I saw this guy on this shoot and they were really good or fun to work with. If you, if you're looking for that person. So, you know, we've got a lot of really cool comments from, from professionals like, Oh, this is the most professional like student shoot or indie shoot we've ever been on. So it's like, Oh, that makes you feel really good. Cause you're putting that effort to try to be professional. Cause that's almost like your, that's almost your resume is you every day working alongside people they don't really care what's on a piece of paper if that makes no absolutely makes sense that's i've always been a firm believer that you know try the job out and that that's going to prove to me that you can do the job this piece of paper can be bullshit and fake and what you do in front well for you in front or behind the cameras but what you do in person is what's going to you know that's if you're going to be able to do it yeah. And the cool thing, like, you know, in a game, there's like s- skills involved. So it's, it's a lot harder to bullshit because you could bullshit your way in the door, but the second you go to grab a light or wrap a cable or set something up, you, anyone could tell if, if you didn't know what you were doing. Did you, did your, did your, uh, editing, um, editing, uh, and everything else you did with Mitch and Mike or, um, did, has that helped you you've also got a big background in music so like i mean you said wrapping cables you you should be pretty damn good at wrapping cables like i said it it was like i wrapped my first cable it was because there's specific ways to do it for different lights there's different techniques There's, there's ways that it's proper so that when they're stored the cables don't get damaged like there's all there's it's it's odd. There's like a standard for how many extension cords go in a milk crate. Like this. Oh, wow. (laughs) Unlike a band where you fit as many into a milk crate as you can. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. The Mitch and Mike stuff definitely helped. But like one of the biggest things that helped was learning how to work for 12, 14 hours at a time. Cause that's a big reality in these situations. But like, we just do it cause, Oh no, we got to get an episode done. We got to write it. So we might spend 14 hours one day writing it and the next day shooting it and editing it. Like, so all those long hours yeah. prepares you because that's the reality. You've got to work those hours and you need to be able to give a result at the end of them. Like you don't really have time to fuck around and learn because you have to give a product. Exactly. Now, have you been on any um, like professional shoots yet since you've been out there? No. So there's really no time, but there's lots of like big shoots that happen around town. So you can walk by them. You can talk to people. You can see what's going on. So they shoot a ton of TV here. Um, I guess like the big ones, like they shoot like the flash, uh, Supergirl, Riverdale. Yeah. So like a lot of those types of kind of TV or Netflix or I don't know what you call them, but yeah, like TV shows. Like the CW and all that other, like, yeah, oh, yeah, they're network TV shows, right? Yeah, and like a lot of those movies, those um, movie of the week and Hallmark stuff. And then sometimes you get the really big stuff. So we were walking around the set of um, Sonic 2, I think they were the filming. Hedgehog 1? Yeah. So like that, they're shutting down main streets. They've got car chases. They've got these giant light. They're lighting up city blocks. Like it's really cool, especially to see the machine of like the production, like the, all they're parking all their trailers and vans down streets and gear trucks and all the food services. And it's like a little army that comes in and everyone's got their designations. And it's like really cool to see how these big machines can operate so smoothly. Now, how are they doing it now because of COVID? Like, I mean, 
Um, are they still like, do the, I take it, these actors, these producers, um, I mean, you, you're working on your own, you're working on a film now too, your own. Um, so with all the restrictions in Canada for COVID and crap, um, what kind of restrictions do you got to follow? Like the mask thing or the, do you guys all have to be double vaxxed or, or stuff like that? Um, so I, I don't know about, I'm sure each like different production on a professional level might have different mandates, but right now, as far as I'm aware, you don't need to have a vaccination. Like there's no proof required. Um, but like everyone wears masks. You try to distance as much as you can, but like in the reality, like the camera team, they're pretty close and they're working on stuff together. Like it's kind of hard to distance, but like everyone's, you're fairly spread out anyway. Like yeah. even without COVID, like, cause there's usually a lot of space and everyone's got their own departments. But um, the big one is we used to have like COVID staff on set that were kind of like always watching or going around with hand sanitizer. Like okay. if they saw it, oh, can you spread apart? But that's kind of gone away. We kind of self-regulate now. But the biggest one is like actors kind of have to have masks on for most of it, like until like their makeup's kind of done, then yeah. you can't really put masks on, but like the makeup people have to wear like the face shields while they're applying makeup and hair, just cause they're in that close proximity. Right. But it's like, I can't even, I don't even know how many movies we've worked on in the past year. I've probably been on 20 sets and wow. like no one's gotten sick. So Excuse like, me. I guess that's a really good sign. Like, like, Oh, you're working in close quarters with all these people all the time. And, at the end of the day, who knows where you're going? You might be going to the bar. You might be going kissing some lady on the mouth. And then you're coming back to work coughing in each other's faces. But, yeah, it's kind of surprising that, like, I assumed that I would have been sick at least once this year and hasn't happened. Have you had a cold or anything? Nothing? No. Well, are you getting tired of the rain? Don't you get a lot of rain That's out like there? That's a myth. I found out that they like tell people so they don't move here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I figured as much. Those bastards. It's um, like not. It's not bad. Like it does when it rains. It rains, but it's not like. It's not what I imagined. You know what's worse than the rain? The sirens. Oh, the oh, oh crime is high out there, or accidents, yeah, or. It's probably a lot of overdoses and like drug related stuff but there's always sirens like ambulance, fire, police, like, Oh, wow. Yeah. The sirens are worse than the rain. So you say like, I mean, so you, you would say that it's easier living out in BC than it is like living in Ottawa because you did, you went through all the COVID bullshit here. So you went from those huge, huge restrictions here to like not near as restrict out there. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was a nice change, but you know, don't forget the population difference, the population density difference, the, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of big differences between the two places. Um, and you know, it's just also like spread rate and travel rate. And I don't know, I, it's, it's like a weird thing to compare, but it was definitely like nicer being here. Cause also like, I can walk 10 minutes and be on a beach or I can walk an hour and be on five different beaches. And like, there's palm trees on some of them. You can go to like a rainforest. There's a giant protected park. It's just, it's, it's beautiful. Like there's so much to do just walking to see like Ottawa was nice in the summer when they like shut down part of that, where I lived along the water, that big road and everyone's riding bikes and walking yeah. kind of like along the canal. Like that was nice, but like, it's not nothing compared to here. It is gorgeous. We've been fucking with mask mandates and, and now we've got our pass. You said you don't have a vaccine passport out there. Yeah, we do now. So that, that was, I think they just, they did, rolled it in two phases, but essentially like you needed, you need proof to like go inside and eat. Okay. Same as here. So, so like any restaurants and stuff, I think movie theater, like that kind of stuff, you yeah. just need the proof. But um, that's kind of a newer thing, maybe a month or two old. Oh, really? Yeah. See, we've been going since I went uh, the 22nd of September, I guess. Um, so, yeah, but this is so close to the same time. Um, but you don't need to. What's that? Huh? 
you don't need two vaccines yet. I think the 22nd is when you need to have two. Okay. Yeah. We need, yeah, we have to have two. And it's like, okay, so I got to show them the picture of my vaccine and then I got to show them my ID. And it's like, all right, I can handle this though. I'm not, I'm not going to complain about the vaccine passports because um, a, I'm not a pussy and B it's, you got your phone anyways. Yeah. The, the only, the only thing that kind of, I don't know if it annoys me or what, but about this vaccine passport, because, you know, they were talking about it, oh, that'll never happen, and then it happens. Like, all these things that they, I'd almost feel more comfortable if just at the beginning they said, no, listen, everyone has to get vaccinated, no discussion. And, like, take it that way, because they're just prolonging it and they're kind of creeping to that eventuality. Like, oh, well, you can't eat in restaurants. Well, what's next? Oh, you can't go to grocery stores. What's next? Oh, you can't leave your house. Like, it almost feels like they're going to, get there eventually so you do think that that's what they're trying to do like i mean you're with this you think we're becoming more of a like a communist type situation where they're dictating what the fuck we got to do and we've got no choice now we're giving up our well i i I can't say whether or not it has anything to do with communism but um or whatever i I saw an article again i can't verify it but it said um like the toronto whatever the toronto hospital that deals with organ transplants. So like the number one place that does the organ transplants okay. in the country um, there, you have to be double vaxxed to be eligible on the donor list now. Oh, really? Or like t- as a recipient. So let's say you've been waiting for three years for your liver. And <laughs> I, I like how you picked liver. <laughs> and and the one comes up and you're like, well, I don't want the vaccine. They say, well, no, next like it's, you, it's weird. What do you think about that situation? Well, that, that's kind of why I think it's a little weird. Like you might as well go all or nothing at the beginning. Hey, everyone needs a vaccine. The end rather than like taking it like bit by, because they're getting, it feels like they're getting there. But if they're going to say you can't have a kidney, you're going to essentially die. If you don't get this vaccine, it seems crazy. Um, but like on the other side, I know there's like arguments about, you know, oh, my personal freedoms or my rights or this or that. But like, I'd be fine if let's say you don't want to get vaccinated for whatever reason. It can be legitimate or or, you know, tinfoil hat. You just don't want this vaccine. I'm fine with that. You just have to sign this card that says uh, you you don't accept any like provincial health care. So you don't get to go to the hospital if you break your arm or you get in a car crash or uh, that you have COVID. That makes sense. Like, okay, well, that's fine. You can choose not to, but you're exempting yourself from these services meant for the public health and the public good. See, but, you know. Did you have, like, I mean, did you have, like, do you have the anti-vaxxers protesting and, like, the anti-maskers and all that shit like we have around here or? I, I don't know. And it, I kind of don't care. Like, like, you know, it's kind of part of whatever you want to call our society. Like you're, if you don't agree with something, you're should be allowed to vocalize it, but, but don't get the return of. Yeah. It's just like, same with like in, the, in a weird way. Like I feel like the same way with like smoking. Oh, uh, Hey, I, I can choose to smoke. Yeah. I know it's, it's harmful or potentially harmful, mm-hmm. but like, Oh, I don't get to get cancer treatment from the government. If I get cancer, like that make, I, you know, it, it's starting to all make sense to me like that. Um, yeah. My biggest thing was that people like uh, Randy Hillier, the MPP for uh, Lanark Frontenac, he's been doing um, anti-mask rallies and now it's an anti-vax thing. My thing with it all is, is that they have a sign on a door that says no mask. They also have a sign on the door that says no shoes, no service. You know, what's the difference? There's no difference to that because if you don't want, if you want in, you're going to oblige by their rules. And if you, if not, you go somewhere else. Like that's my big take on it. Well, that's like a hard argument because you're kind of saying, okay, I'm, I'm a business. Like, is it mandated by the business or is it mandated by say the government that government. allows it all? Okay. So the government can now decide, Hey, um, you have to abide by these rules and off in order to get service. 
Right. Okay. So the problem is like, okay, maybe a majority agrees with that, right? Good or right or wrong, good or bad. Okay. Enough of us say that that's an acceptable price to pay yeah. to, to be awarded these services. I guess the fear is what happens if they escalate that or what happens if they, you know, add more caveats that no shoot, no service, no, like in Quebec, no face coverings to ride the bus and like, Oh, well, wait a minute. Like is, whose, whose interest is that protecting? Like, it's weird that Quebec went through this. You can't uh, wear a face covering and now you have to. That's kind of well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a few years ago when uh, Harper was still in power here yeah. in or I guess he was a prime minister and yeah, that was the, the thing was that they went through the whole mask thing and now we got to wear a mask. That's because you can't tell who's who anymore. I can't tell friends. I walk by them in stores and it's like with the mask, I can't recognize some of them. Well, I assume they'd be also wearing a Dwayne's world shirt or no, no, nobody, nobody has those. Um, you and me, I, I mean, I got rid of the first batch of them, but uh, I haven't seen any other than you and Mitch wearing them or. I wish I had, I, I like, I kept it in auto on storage. I wish I had a Dwayne's World shirt because every time I go out and I'm like doing something on camera, I like to have a different like shirt, but I don't have my Dwayne's World shirt. And I don't <laughs> have my dumb bitch media shirt. <laughs> And I don't have my uh, my Georgia Silly shirt either, so I, I left all those in storage. <laughs> but I'd be repping those hard. Are you like with the? Do you got to wear masks on buses there? Yeah. Okay, and you got to you got to have the thing. So basically, it's the same, but a lot more nicer. Your rules are the same, except just nicer there than yeah. You. Yeah, it's it's all the same. It's it's honestly it's not that big of a deal anymore, and that's kind of the scary part. The fact that, that it's common it's or fine. it's normal now. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, I will walk into a store and go, "Ah, fuck! I forgot to put my mask on." But I mean, it's not it's not something I do on you know. It's just you get going or whatever, and so I'm still not a hundred percent happy with them. Um, I wear them. Because, well, of my health conditions, and not to mention it's the rules. I, you know me, I'm a huge rule follower. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, and honestly, it's like politics aside or personal beliefs aside. I just don't want to deal with the hassle. Like maybe if I was 20, I'd be that, that asshole not wearing one and, you know, fuck you. But it's like... It's just not worth, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. Now that you're 30, you're all grown up and. Well, it's just, it's like almost picking your battles and like, where do you want to put your energy? Exactly. Really, and especially like what you're hassling the person working for minimum wage at the store who doesn't even care about the rules. I worry like, about that because my sons both work in the public. One works at Giant Tiger, one works at Burger King. And I worry about that because they're not, a, you know, they get pissed. Well, especially the one at Giant Tiger, he gets right pissed when people aren't wearing the mask. But that's because, you know, he's been there through this whole bullshit dealing with it. And he's an essential employee, but nobody else is taking, trying to take care of him. And mm -hmm. I get it. I get the point. Um, I, I wish I could sit out there and just watch and somebody give my kid a hard time and I just go beat him. But like, <laughs> I can't, obviously that's not going to be able to happen, but yeah, it's just because there are still assholes out there. Yeah. But you know, maybe, maybe I won't be one of them for a change. <laughs> wow. You are growing up. <laughs> well, I'd rather funnel my, my asshole into the arts. That's, that's what I'll, I'll put all my effort into being well, an you've asshole. Been doing that for years, but yeah, now you're going to, you're calming it down and stuff. Well, I, then again, I can't see some of the comedy pages that you're a part of because I, you know, I'm not allowed in them, so I can't read them. But uh, I kind of, I kind of checked out. I'm like, oh, once I moved, I'm like, well, I'm not really part of this community, um, you know, geographically, like as much as. Yeah. It's like, okay, no, that's kind of your business now, and you guys are doing your thing. And it's weird because people try to involve me and stuff, or I get up messaged and updated, and like I. 
I kind of don't care about your little drama. <laughs> well, <laughs> you want to know what's funny is that when I was a member of that group, my stress level was so fucking high. Like, I just, you know, I just, you would think about shit and you would boil and you just want to punch something. And, and then once they kicked me out, it's like, oh my God, all, most of my stress just kind of left. Yeah, but that also is like mostly my fault for putting you, you know, like out there. Like, you know, before before we started all of this like media stuff, you were just a nice guy at a comedy show that people saw every once in a while. So you're the one who developed Dwayne the Asshole. Hey, well, we'll be right back with my chat with uh, Mike Tamafi and myself about uh, CERB payments. COVID-19, Mike's moved to uh, film school in Vancouver, leaving Ottawa to go there. Uh, but uh, what podcast would be complete without a beer review, right? So here's the beer review guy, Charles Brunel. And the men who hold high places must be the ones to start to mold a new reality closer to the heart. What's going on, guys? I don't think I brought my watch. We all know what time is it? Beer review. Time. Tradition. Oh, no. Oh, that's weird. What's the name of that one? Rush. Rush. I wasn't thinking straight. I was in a rush. Tradition. Commercial. Rush. Canadian Golden Ale. Oh. Oh, that almost has a hint of Alpine. I think I like that. Do you guys like that? We well, can't answer because you can't taste it through the computer. I'll do it for you. Holy shit. I think uh, Alpine it has a close second. <sighs> Just in case I drip some on the can. Not to be mistaken with Kiss. It's Rush, not Kiss. Oh my god, this is actually phenomenal. Because it's closer to the heart. Reality, closer to the heart. Um, guys, we're going to keep this one short. I'm going to give this... Um... What should I give this, guys? You tell me. Tell me in the ear. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to give this 10. Juno's. Out of ten. Ah. Cheers! Now uh, let's get back to Dwayne's world. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you soon. Well, like I said, it's entertaining. It's a good character. It's it does you know, encourage engagement. And like I said, I. I still will listen to those Dwayne's World podcasts. Like, some of them are amazing. Like, they're so entertaining. It's like, oh, I'm so proud, I guess, to have made or been a part of making something that I enjoy, that I would be a listener to. Like, yeah, I, because I think when we first started that, there wasn't a lot like that. Like, there's just not, like, the way, um, and now, like, I mean, with society now, too, um, 
at that point where, you know, you disagree with somebody and they think they hate you now because you've just disagreed with them. And like, I mean, we, the three of us made it, made also like, I mean, it was a learning thing for people that, Hey, these guys can yell and scream and call each other, whatever. But at the end of the day, they're coming back again to do another episode. Yeah. Like, I mean, there was that one guy at the bar that said, I thought you and Mike hated each other. It's like, are you nuts? <laughs> Remember that? Uh, yeah, well, it's just, but you know, it's it's a weird thing, um, and you know, we could go on all day about what what how toxic some communities can be, but it's like it's a weird thing where we're you know, it felt like we were trying to put out a product, we were trying to create something and put it out there, and like using performance, like you're performing, and then people take it seriously or they see it as this. It's like, well, no, like. We're performing and they're attacking it. It's like, wait a minute, what are you attacking? The people you're attacking don't exist. The people you're mad at. No. <laughs> like it's such a weird concept. You're like, hey guys, it's it's an act. It's we're having fun. We did. Like, and like those were some <laughs> of the most fun things I've done in the last few years was doing those podcasts because they were we we would just kill ourselves like laughing and like, oh yeah, most of the editing is cutting out us laughing. <laughs> well, yeah, and and like I mean, I didn't even it didn't even bug me that I was the brunt of all bad. Like I mean, how you and Mitch tried to portray me all the time. It didn't bug me that much. You know, it was like because like I mean, I know I'm not simple. I know I'm not, you know, it's uh, but just the way everything worked. It was just I don't know, it it was easy to work with you guys. And I'm sure with your new career, people will find it easy to work with you. Yeah, well, like in that dynamic, it's hard because like I'm, I'd like, I like to take that role as the, as the, the guy that's getting punched on. It's just that like, you know, like not necessarily like Mitch or not necessarily you, like because obviously the the triangle would change. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes like, we would pick on like we would gang up on you or we would gang up on Mitch yeah. or. But like I'm fine. I I would have gladly taken that role, but it's like okay, like it almost needed that aggressive, constant voice coming at it from all these different angles. And like, just luckily, I know knew a little bit about a lot of things, so I didn't have to like research to be able to argue with you. So I think that was just kind of like the natural. It, it was, way. And, and that was the thing too. And you were good at it. You're so you could bait me into almost yeah. anything too. It was like, it's like you could almost go, okay, he's gonna call me a fag in three, two, <laughs> one. <laughs> Set my watch. And, and yeah, no, like, I, I don't know. I, I miss it. Like it's it's a good dynamic. It's just like it's a hard one because as it evolves you can't really keep doing the same thing. Like that's where like, we recorded a couple that never got released just because they were kind of stale. I still think the best one is the Dom Prey Andrew Barr. Oh I God. That, and Dom beat the shit out of me. It was so funny. <laughs> but Andrew, I always liked how Andrew would come to my rescue and it's like, fuck Andrew's, off. Dom. <laughs> not, Andrew's such a nice guy. Like he was just, Oh, it was that was that was a lot of fun. I love the I loved um I loved our Anne Marie one too because she yeah. went in thinking one thing and left absolutely flipped. You know, we had totally well, flipped the script on her and it was awesome. Yeah, and that was kind of like always the idea of that show was that I don't know through what but you had somehow developed this reputation. And I think, well, I guess I know why it was based on the shit you would write on the internet, but <laughs> you developed this <laughs> reputation as being some like far right racist, like homophobic guy. Like, well, th what the fuck are you talking? Like, it was just so crazy to me that people thought this I was like, okay, how do we, how do we get people to see that you're not this person they think you are? Like, how do we like show? Cause you know, maybe not everyone's going to go have a beer with you and just hang out and get to know you, but they're going to form these opinions. And it just, it felt so shitty. And obviously <laughs> like maybe the way we went about it was fucked, but it's like, it was weird though. Like trying to call you these things We're like, I'm trying to call you this, 
this racist, then you're just giving examples of like, oh, no, this is what I feel about that. This is how I think. Like, no, I'm not homophobic. These are all my experiences. But like, I'm just mirroring what all these other people are throwing at you. But now we're actually listening to what you're saying. So like, that was always like the cool part about it. And, you know, the people that actually listened to it really liked it or really had these changed perspectives on you. But a lot of people wouldn't listen to it. Yeah, they wouldn't. Um, but I mean, I, I am, like I said, I am so glad that that's, that we did that. And I'm glad that it'll be around for, you know, it's on the internet. So it'll be basically there forever. And uh, I hope not. I say a lot of terrible things. <laughs> you you actually did, but but all in the price of a character. Yeah, but people like, in the world of like the sound bite, especially in print, it doesn't matter. Like, no. They're not going to listen to the or know who you are or know the style. Like anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, it's, it's like one of those things where you're you're happy with the work like the the end results like oh man this is like really good the time that was spent like how many hours we'd sit there yeah at least guaranteed two two uh, guaranteed two two and a half mostly or three and a half like and just having a whale of a time like i mean it was just it was so i don't know it, it's i i see these stories about people who do their tv shows together or whatever they do together and how much fun they actually you know they say how much fun they've had working with these people and it's in our situation it was absolutely like a blast like there was always we always had beer we always had we we never had a shortage of things to talk about ever like yeah and we knew each other. Like that's the that's the thing too. Yeah, it was a really cool experience. And like, I don't think it's something that can ever be like recreated. Like it, it was just such a um, lightning in a bottle. And for I don't was it five or six episodes? So I think we six? got we we ended up with six, which is yeah. You know, so it's a, I'll take it. It's a, yeah, it's a nice little run. I don't know. Was that over a year or two? Two years maybe? Two years, I think. But I mean, COVID fucked us over, and then. Mitch, Mitch had to go out and do, wanted to do different things. And then you, you know, you wanted to do, uh, you moved and, and stuff like that, which is fine. And that's why I'm trying to bring it back. And that's why I hope to have like you and Mitch, one, one of these days we'll get all three of us on here. Um, but they, the, the whole COVID thing changed us all. Like, I mean, we couldn't just get together and hang out according to the rules um and then like i mean you personally took the serb payments that you were given by the government and actually did something positive with it which absolutely impressed the shit out of me it's like people were buying more booze they're buying more dope they're getting tattoos they were doing this and that mike decides you know what i'm going back to college or i'm going back to school and um for how big of an asshole you can be <laughs> You, like you are, you are, you're just so smart and you did the, uh, like you took your serb and made it turn into a positive. Too many people sat on their fucking asses and said, you know what? It's free money. Well, yeah, it was definitely tired. Like for however long it was, it was like almost six, it was over six months, I think before oh, yeah. I went to school. Right. Yeah. But like I had applied, I had applied almost pretty soon after Serb started, it's like, man, everything shut down. I can't like develop or really grow, you know, with comedy necessarily. I'm not doing Zoom shows. Like, you know, Mitch wouldn't come over because of like, he was like very strict with all the COVID stuff. Yeah, like, no, I get it. It took a, like, eventually we, I think we did film a season of Mitch and Mike, maybe, I don't remember, or a podcast, but like, you know, so my creative outlet was gone. I was like, okay, hey, in this downtime, who knows how long this is going to go on? Let's learn a skill. Let's get better at something so that when things open up, you know, be, I'll be better. I'll, you know, cause you, I, I'd read stuff or try to research or try to learn, but it's not the same as, you know, having instru like professional instructors yep. and real equipment and, you know, a it's also like the time frame. Like if it's up to you, hey, hey, Dwayne, uh, write write a new ten minutes of stand up. 
okay, I'll work on it here and there. But it's like, oh, you have to write 10 minutes of stand-up. It's, it's, it's due on Thursday. We did that oh. once. But, like, it changed, like, you know, there's motivation. It changes. Yeah. yeah, it makes you work. Like, I mean, we did that. We tested each other on a third or on a Tuesday show at Yuck Yucks. It's like, okay, we're allowed one old joke, and we have to have a full new set. And we busted our asses off, and we pulled out a new set because we just challenged each other. Yeah, I'm like I really like that. That's why like Mitch and I got along or get along so well. Like people, I, I like friendly rivalries. I like where we people push each other to keep getting better. And like it, it's not that you there's any malice or dislike, but it's like, oh fuck you, you're better than me right now. I got to work harder to get better than you, and then vice versa. And you keep yeah. laddering up, but people like don't seem to. I don't know. Be, that's how you can just tell what people are in it for. Like sometimes, you know, and you got to respect it. If it is just a hobby for some people, it is just a little break from life or something they enjoy doing. Yeah. But like those people won't necessarily push me to get better. And I want to surround myself with people that are, will push me and I can push them. And I like to think I helped a little, um, because we, we did, um, God, between, before Serb and before, you know, we, we did spend a lot of time together. And it was a lot of, like, talking about jokes and how can we do this? How can we get better? Um, I still love our trip to Toronto where we did the Danger Room. I absolutely love that show. It's, I had fun. And, yes, I know, I kind of did better than Mike. And you know what? That's weird because I've never done better than Mike. <laughs> I, I, I tell people that all the time. Like, oh, yeah, Dwayne's the reason I still did comedy or still do comedy. I would have quit. I, I would have. I quit. Yeah, and then you had me going, quit being a sissy, you fuck. Get back drag, up there. Drag me to the show. I like, I don't want to go up. You went and put my name on without, t I'm like, I'm not, I'll just watch you. And I had to go up. And if I hadn't done that, I probably never would have gotten back on stage. See, look at that. Dwayne could be part of, uh, your uh, memoirs at the end of your <laughs> career when you become bigger than Kevin Smith. Yeah, well, like, also, you're to blame then for all the shit I've done. <laughs> all ah, the bad things I've done. Yeah, I forgot about that part. But uh, back to the Serb thing. COVID hits, Serb starts. You say, you know what? I'm not going to wait to get back into comedy. I'm just going to go do something else. And voila, here you are, like a new guy. The cool thing is like learning about film and all different roles that I can now do on a set. It's not about making it big. It's like, oh shit, I can make a living. Where it's like stand up, you got to be, even the, the top guys in Canada aren't making like a living living. No. Like, like, you know, they still might have to do other stuff or they're, you know, they're doing their corporate gigs and then touring and then doing, trying to get commercials and like, maybe even have a side gig on Isn't top it, of that or nobody knows yeah. how much help you have given me given me in editing or in ideas or like and you do the same thing for everybody like i mean you're you're pretty you're easily easy to approach um and if some somebody genuinely needs help then you're you'll like you give them if you have time, um, but you've been that way since I met you at uh, that fucking Wellington place where we did comedy. But but um, so I think you're gonna I think you're gonna do good. Yeah, well, that was kind of like always the the approach, and let's help Mitch and Mike. Mitch and Mike started after we went to Toronto. Yeah, after you and I went to Toronto. Yeah, because on the way there, I have uh, on Twitter the live stream. Yeah. And we'd, we made, I don't know how many, like 50 of these videos over this weekend. And they got crazy. Like there was hundreds of thousands of views on these videos. And it was just like, oh, man, people will watch anything. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be good. So the idea was like. 600 people watching me eat a fucking sub at Mr. Sub. <laughs> 600 awesome. fucking people <laughs> so crazy <laughs> um so yeah that was kind of the idea and so it was like okay let's create something because 
you know, there wasn't a lot of stand-up gigs. I was fairly new. And it's like, oh, let's create something. We had all this time. Let's make something. And I just listened to Mark Hatfield had uh, Mike McDonald on his podcast. Okay. And, you know, it was a really good podcast. And one of the last questions he asked, it was like, oh, if you, if you woke up tomorrow and you were 18 years old and you knew everything you knew now and, you, you know, you wanted to be in comedy, like, what would you do? How would you start if you had to do it all over again? He's like, man, I, everyone's got a, a camera in their, in their pocket now. Everyone's got a video camera in their pocket. Like I would just make something and put it on the internet. Uh, I wouldn't care what it was. And I just keep making it and keep putting content out. And so with those two ideas, I, I remember approaching Mitch after a show. And yeah, like, I was kind waiting of for you to go for beer after that, after that show. You were standing there, it's like, fuck, dude, hurry up. And yeah, I was just like, hey, man, uh, we made this stupid thing, this Twitch thing, and it got all these views. And this is what Mike McDonald said, like, I want to make something like I got this idea or he had had an idea. I forget who had the idea, but we just knew we wanted to make something. And then we had that talk. And then the next day he came over and we like recorded the first episode. And that, that was the thing. It was like he, he's always mentioned that. It's like, man, it's so people talk about doing things all the time. Everyone's got an idea or I got this project. I'm thinking about doing this or let's do that. And they never do it. Yeah. So it was like we managed to find each other where we're just, okay, let's do it. And then we did it. And, you know, he was definitely a driving force because there'd be times like, because I go through different, like, I don't know what you want to call them, moods or levels of depression or levels of like creative just depletion where I – I don't know. I, I, I got nothing. I don't want to do anything. So he definitely motivates, especially during those times. Like even with you, anytime, well, when do you want to do a podcast? Like these are my days. Yeah, let's do it this day. And then you, you've never canceled. You've never been like, you know, that's just like, okay. So it's really good to work with people that want to work, willing to work and are passionate and show up. And like, if you can surround like, and out of Ottawa, Two other people I found. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and one of them turns out to be the scourge of Ottawa comedy. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like so interesting because you know you're you're there's all these people that are, you know, creative people and they are they care about these things. Okay, let's do things, and then no. Okay, well, then there's a limit, like. Yeah, so it's like, oh, it's just very nice. And that kind of just gave me more of a push. Like, okay, find people that are creative. Find people that are working. Find people that are motivated. And find people that are better than you. Like, that's the greatest. I love the fact with our little crazy show that we did was that we all pushed each other to limits. If I hadn't done that stupid competition with you, I wouldn't. That peanut butter movie that you like wouldn't have been made because I wouldn't have written that joke. Oh my God, that is when you <laughs> And I loved, by the way, people, anybody watching this movie, go watch, go to Mitch and Mike. Uh, you'll find them on YouTube, Two Straight Guys, and uh, watch Mike's fucking uh, peanut butter video movie because it is the one of the funniest things I've ever seen. He took it from a little joke in a club to a full-fledged film noir with real actors and it's fucking amazing (laughs) i felt so bad for these actors because they're like what the fuck is this i'm like no trust me trust me it'll be good so like i promised you uh we have been talking to Mike, my buddy, Tom Othi, who is a comedian. Now he's changing to a filmographer. And um, this guy is funny as fuck. Um, I know he doesn't look like much, uh, <laughs> but, he, but he is a good friend of mine. And um, I am so thankful that he took the time to come back. And I know um, this was originally his baby as well as mine. And I know he will be back. Um, and I'm just so glad that he took time out of his busy schedule to uh, reconnect with Dwayne's world. Um, because like I said, uh, Dwayne, like we, you've said, or 
we've heard during this whole interview is that, you know, it was a bright light in his, in his step to where he's going now. And um, I, I'm serious. Mike, he is one of the funniest guys I know, and he's creative and he's smart. And I will always, always appreciate having him here. Uh, and it's not, I'm not just kissing your ass either, you big hairy bastard, you. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? Thank you for having me on Dwayne's World, uh, Dwayne's World podcast right now. You know, I, I will listen to it every week on Spotify. It's one of my, my go-tos, one of my favorite things. And when I'm not listening to Dwayne's World uh, podcast, I'm on uh, YouTube.com slash Dwayne's World, where he's got the boozing blogger. Oh, that's, uh, that's crazy. If you want to get a deep dive into the boozing blogger. But one of my favorite episodes was um, – Dwayne was on the hunt for uh, a vegan for vegan food. <laughs> what was it? You're making a salad. Um, so yeah, check that one out for sure. But yeah, the boozing blogger is uh, definitely, whew, he's a fun guy to hang out with. <laughs> you rock buddy. Thank yes, you. Thank you for having me. Dwayne's world.